John Karras, thanks uh, for being with us. Always glad to have you with us. Uh, John Karras with Lockheed Martin, one of our sponsors. And you're in charge of like everything to do with human spaceflight at, at Lockheed Martin, right? That's correct. Yep. That, that's a big job, isn't it? Well, you know, right now we got to make sure we fly shuttles correctly, and we got to make sure station <clears throat> operates good. And, and right now we're in the middle of you know developing Orion spacecraft and hopefully uh, helping the nation out with the heavy lift as well. All so right. it's a little busy. I want to talk about Orion. I want to talk sure. about the heavy lift. But you know, you, you mentioned let's not, not forget that that t those tanks are still uh, a Lockheed Martin product. Correct. Mishu, is there anything? What's going on at Mishu? Is is that? Yeah. Well, Mishu, right now, there's we were at 2,500 employees. Now we're only like 200 direct charge employees. Those guys work really hard to fix tanks and repair them. And uh, so God bless them, and uh, we appreciate that. So uh, we also have an additional few hundred people working Orion. So all the, all the structures on Orion, uh, the metal structures here and the composite structures are all built at Mishu, and, we're, and we've uh, completed the first spacecraft undergoing tests, and they're building the, the first flight spacecraft in 13. So... So there'll be some work there. There's some work there, and hopefully, it, you know, if heavy goes, and we're talking about heavy test missions and evolving, as I think the administrator have said and and and, uh, and has implied, that you know that could be there. All right, let's before we get to heavy, let's talk about Orion. Well, first sure. of all, you, you're you're proud that you've you've built your your first one. Mm -hmm, correct. At least Orion the, number one. Orion number one, our test article. Uh, mostly focused on the crew module because that's where most of the subsystems are, and it's mm -hmm. a, it should be undergoing test uh, starting uh, any day. All right, and this is the fairing that would go over it, and yep. of course, and with the, it, the know, launch very abort system. Very yeah, yeah. And launch abort. Let's not forget that we've had 30 years of flying without launch abort yep. capability. That's right. a, yep. a huge yep. degree of safety that's added in exactly immediately. Right. And that's but, already flight proven that we did last year out of White Sands, so that piece of, that piece of the system is already ready to go. So Mar taking aside the politics for a moment, if you had all the money in the world, mm -hmm. where, where, where is Orion headed short term, long term? Sure. Well, right now we're focused on our test mission in 13. Uh, our contract would be another test mission in 14 and, and the ability to fly crew in 15. And this uh, is to the station? This would be to the station or anywhere. Actually, our crew mission in, in 15, yeah, mostly to the station, right. but I'll put it this way, to low Earth orbit, and uh, and we need a couple more mods to be able to fly the lunar spacecraft. And I, I if, if it was unlimited money, we could go to the moon in 15 on an Orion. Right. Okay, so right. so I did give you a certain amount of time phasing when it comes to when it comes to budget. So uh, so in 15, we'll be able to, to go fly a crew in just about anywhere we want. And uh, hopefully by that time, we'll have elements of heavy coming along, right? right? Mm -hmm. or heavy test vehicles and launches, and, mm -hmm. um, and then we can actually start talking about missions. Would you care much what rocket sits beneath you? You know, not really, other than I, I want to... It's safe and reliable. Uh, safe and reliable. <laughs> right, that was, right. took the words out of my mouth. And, uh, but in reality, I think, you know, if you really want to go beyond Earth orbit, you, you, it, it's kind of hard to string a bunch of smaller rockets together. And, sure. you know, a larger rocket from a dollar per kilogram standpoint really wins every time by the economies of scale. You just kind of run the numbers. Mm -hmm. I like that one plus six. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> anyway, plus three. So as anyway, opposed to multiple <laughs> launches. As opposed to multiple yeah. launches. So, um, wow. Anyway, and uh, just lost so, shore, so right? the heavy yeah. will uh, will help us go beyond the low Earth orbit and, and get us there in a more expeditious manner. As a matter of fact, if you want to go to a near Earth object, your launch opportunity is about this wide because well, yeah. those they don't come around often. It isn't like the moon, so you can't afford other than one launch attempt at, with with a rocket that's already been pre-assembled and pre-tested. Right. Well, right. yeah, well, let's talk a little bit. You know, right, so you've got your Ryan, you've got heavy. We mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. shapes of it are a little fuzzy to me. Do you, mm -hmm. you have it figured out? You know, I'm got to put it up to con Congress is designing. Well, it as long as Congress designs it, we're going to be in great shape. <laughs> well, but you, you, you know what? Yeah, we, we've really gone through. Idea. We've actually put Congress through. You know, missile design 101, <laughs> and, and you need a tank. And you need engines. <laughs> That's and all you need to do. It's pretty that simple. And it's just a matter of how big those are. And you Fire out one end and, and up the other go, side. Right? You only got a choice yeah. of a couple engines. So it's really not that hard to make a decision. Even Congress can do it. <laughs> <laughs> God, God bless you on that one. All right. So let's talk about some, some potential targets. Mm -hmm. well, you, sure. you, when, once the Congress has designed your rocket, mm -hmm. <laughs> that'll be interesting. Of course, it, uh, a rocket designed by Congress will go in several directions. But that's, that's another story. Um, one, one of the one of the things we've been talking about are, are moons of Mars. This mm -hmm. is Deimos. That is correct. Yep. That is not my brain. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, that's a potential location. Sure, that's just a potential uh, near location. Near-Earth objects are another yep. option. Let's talk right. about why would, why would we be interested? Why would, why would Deimos be of interest? Why would a near-Earth object sure. be of interest to us? Sure. Well, first thing, that when we started putting together an, a, 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 a family of missions for Orion, we said, I want to assume a flat budget, okay? So if you do that and you design missions around that, then landing on Mars is hard because you need technologies yep. that cost tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars. But it just turns out Mother Nature, the good Lord, provided us with Deimos, right? 
So what's interesting about Deimos is that it's stable, always points towards Mars. This, this front is uh, what represents what always points towards Mars. By the way, you can always see the Earth with its orbit, and it's always sunlit. So you always have an ability for heat, power, communications. It's almost in the, in the uh, Mars uh, synchronous orbit. It's just a little further out. So actually, you see large parts of Mars all the time. And uh, you can get here because the gravity's low. So uh, we actually put together a mission that says for six heavies, you fly four in one year and two in another year. You can actually put together it with, uh, I'll say, technologies that are within our grasp. And then if then you can actually accomplish a mission. And then if you had nuclear power or very large abilities to land massive amounts of uh, hardware on, on Mars with aero braking, which are technologies that are not available today, then you can, you can evolve this mission. So it's, it's, it's just one way to say if you had a limited amount of funny, funding and some, and some international partners to provide you other elements, uh, if, if the United States provides an Orion spacecraft and a heavy lift, you can actually go, go, to, go to the moons of Mars. You can explore the, uh, both moons, as a matter of fact. The Orion would explore uh, <coughs> Deimos uh, and then go into Phobos and then actually can do telerobotics from the surface of Mars mm -hmm. uh, combined with uh, uh, Mars sample returns. So if you think about a Mars sample return, you have to have rockets and, and reentry capsules and parachutes and avionics. Well, <coughs> if you had an Orion in Mars orbit, you could easily send multiple samples in the world, we'd retrieve them and bring them back. So, so, it's just, so it's, it becomes, a, it's just an easier target to get to, correct. and yet it puts you in the Mars environment, exactly so you're right. learning about right. how to do exactly this. Exactly right. Yeah. And then, so that's just one way to do it. Uh, you know, other ways are direct entry, but again, if you kind of look at the dollars for that, that's expensive. Okay, so you start with a mission you can do, that's mm -hmm. within the realm of, of uh, you know, the technological grasp you have today and the budget you have today. And then you say, well, if I, I want to go here, then essentially, Deimos is an asteroid, capture asteroids, so all of a sudden asteroids make sense because you're going to be in low gravity fields. Right. So asteroid missions make sense. And oh, by the way, this is a two and a half year mission. Landing's a two and a half year mission. How about we do a year mission with the same hardware, right? And maybe you do a six month asteroid mission with less hardware, with less risk. So it's, it's kind of like the Apollo, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 yeah, progression. The build yeah. It's the build up progression. And it's sustainable. And it's, all, it's sustainable, yeah. and, and that way you don't need to ask for a half a trillion dollars sure. to do it. And that's exactly you know? what we were talking about on the flexible path yeah, with exactly the Augustine right. Committee. You know, yeah. so we just, uh, it's, it's really not a tumor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, and, and the other really interesting thing about, about Deimos is there's spots on the southern hemisphere that are always dark. Mm -hmm. And so we think this could be a captured comet, so there could be resources here. And in reality, you want to park your return stage, whether it's nuclear or, or chemical, in the dark so it doesn't boil off. So how many places in the world have a perfect dark spot, a perfect solar spot that always points to Earth and, and always points to the sun to go help you explore? So if you utilize the resources that, that are out there, you can actually uh, you know, I explore and then you can do uh, different progressions. So this is just, just one mission that I think is capable with today's budget with, uh, to, keep, uh, to keep us, I'll say, on the, on the forefront of space leadership and lead other nations uh, and uh, contribute to our mission rather than us um, <clears throat> still trying to uh, define uh, a mission where the United States will, will participate. So, uh, living off the land a little bit, we're, we're about land, out exactly of time, right. but if you want to go after a near-Earth object, it's mm -hmm. gotta, you got to move quickly, don't you? Well, there's very limited <laughs> ones, yeah. uh, time-wise, yeah. because there's one in 19 and 22, and then one in 27. That's it, right? And well, That we, we know of. Well, we know of a lot of other ones, but those asteroids look like Mars missions. Right. Right. Yeah. And I don't think I want to go do an asteroid that looks like a Mars mission. Might you might as well Mars. do a Mars mission. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Exact, that was yeah. the exact logic. When yeah. we are looking for missions, we right. said, these other ones are far. I'm going to go here, right? Yeah. right. So, so it all kind of makes sense. But uh, the best opportunities in 2019, and I think, let's see, heavy you pull Orion. You know what? If the nation has a little leadership and courage, I'm sure we could pull it off with the budget we got. <laughs> we'll leave it at that one. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you all decide where we are on that. John Karras, always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Take guys. care. Thank you. Thank you.